Universe, it's Monaco here and Milks. We are going to do a video today on Gram Formula Math, calculating it. It's on page 11 in your pack, and um, this is kind of a it's a really important like hinge pin in this unit. It's a really important part of Molson strike geometry. Right. We've really learned a few small little tasks that we've gotten good at right. skills, and then this particular skill is the bridge, if right. you will, into the next big Right. pieces that we're going to do. If you watched our introduction video on making silver chloride, um, we use this gram formula mass exclusively as a conversion factor to get from moles to grams, grams to moles, right. so that we can get a specific amount of target product out of the reaction. So, and so gram formula mass lets us count atoms and moles in a very accurate and precise way. Right, in the lab, because I'm definitely not looking at these atoms. I, I can't see them. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. so, so, here we go. How we do it? Um, first things first, right? Um, I can't see them, so the molar mass enables us to count the atoms by mass of them. Like we just said. It's like a trick. It's a workaround. It is a workaround. Yeah. But it's a good one. Right, you don't want to count that many. One, you can't. Two, it would take forever. And so, was smart. Work smarting. Working smart, not hard, is basically what we're doing here. Right. Yeah. And then just a few other little tidbits, those coefficients in our chemical balanced, balanced chemical equations right. are, usually represent moles. Yes. They could be molecules, they could be atoms if we needed them to be. But they're anything except grams. That's the key. Not grams. So anything but grams. Yeah, and we haven't really seen balanced chemical equations yet in this unit, but we're getting there. We are. We're going to start building these things in. So, we use this whole gram formula mass thing to get from moles to grams. As conversion back. Right. right. And grams back to moles, as we'll find out. Okay, so the technique, the first thing we're going to do is, in our compound, we need to count the number of each of our atoms. So we'll be given a compound to work with. Right. Okay, cool. Yep. And you're going to count, so as one of our skills that we learned earlier. Counting atoms, so if there's a parenthesis, we distribute. If there's not, then we just count the atoms, right? Sure. Counting moles of atoms. Cool. There you go. Yep. Then we're going to multiply the number of atoms by that particular atom's mass on the periodic table. Because that's the other shortcut to Graham's formula, mass. The atomic mass of the atom is related to one mole of that atom because, you know, that's the convention. That's, that's why it was created this way yep. specific, specifically. Okay. And then what we do is we take all those total masses that we just calculated and add them all up. So that would be the, the gram formula mass of the compound. So this is the gram formula mass is the sum of the atomic masses of the elements in the compound. That's it. We're just another way. We need to a way to total it all up. Yeah. That's right. So let's let's we'll do be some. doing multiplication and addition. Yes, we will. No division, no subtraction. Nope. Cool. Nope. You want to do the first one? Sure. Um, let me show you how to do this the way I like it. Um, we're gonna do sodium fluoride. Uh, it's not naming. So what I do is I like to put the elements, I list them up first. So I have sodium and fluoride that I'm working with. Then what I do is I kind of do two terms. The first term, I count the sodium atoms. In this example, I've got one. Okay. Then I'm going to multiply that. That's the big dot for multiplication. And you can put an X for multiplication, but I'm going to multiply that sodium by the atomic mass of sodium in a whole number. And it says 22.9 on the periodic table. We like whole numbers when we're doing this. So we multiply. We get 23. Then I go to my next element, chlorine, parentheses. Uh, there's one of them in that compound. And multiply by the atomic mass of chlorine, 18.9984. I'm going to just take that 19. And I get 1 times 19 is 19. I've got to add these things up. So 23 and 19 is 33, 42, 42, and the units are grams per mole, grams slash mol. Now, that is the key idea there. That is how much one mole of sodium fluoride would weigh, the amount of grams in one mole. It contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. But it weighs 42 grams. I can count that many atoms, molecules, formula units by putting it on a scale and putting it up to 42 grams. So, Mr. Milks takes a second one. Yeah. Uh, do I get to do it the way I showed my class? You can do it the way you do you. Yeah, that's fine. That's so fine. It's really the same thing because the nice thing about math is addition and, and multiplication are what we call cumulative. Cumulative. Commu commutative. Commutative. Yeah. 
one times three is the same as three times one. You can do them in any order. Right. Right. So Mr. Nooks is going to show a slightly different yep. technique. I do very much exactly the same thing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to list my elements out. I got magnesium and I got chlorine and magnesium chloride. And then I just put a dash. And I actually did the masses first. So I look up the mass of magnesium. 24. Yep, 24. And I have one of them, so I'm going to multiply that by one. And that's 24. Chlorine is 35. But I have two of them, so I have to account for both of them. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be 70. I'm going to add these up, and I get 94 grams per mole. Very much the exact same process. I would have gotten the same result. Just the way that I do the math is different. But it's not. It's the same. It's not. It, it's, it's, it's the same. exact same it's the thing. the organization. Yep. The next example's got three elements in it, so we do this. Guess what? For three different elements. Go. So do it my way. N, A, N, and O. So we got one, one, and three. Remember, this is the first number in the sequence there is the number of atoms. I do number of atoms first. Mr. Noakes does mass first. Doesn't matter. Sodium, I remember, is 23 atomic mass units. Yep, we just did that. Nitrogen, I remember, is 14. And oxygen is 16. It's 15.99, but we go to 16. Right. And now, real quick, uh -huh. um, why do I not have three nitrogen atoms? Because there is no subscript after the N for this particular compound. Okay. 3 times 16 is 48. Yeah, 48. Good. Got a mass here, 12, 15. I'm going to carry the 1, 3, 4, 80, 4, 85 grams per mole. I like doing it this way. Oh, that's efficient. Because it's good old fashioned long math. You know, you don't need a calculator, really. It's really the exact same thing. Take it away, Mr. Mills. Right, so now I have three atoms in mine also. So I have calcium, I have nitrogen, and I have oxygen. We do have to use one little trick that we we learned earlier. I'm, when I start counting these, I'm going to have to distribute this too because there's really two nitrates. So when I start counting these atoms, it's going to it's going to come into play. I don't have any. Uh, do I do the mass first? Calcium is 40. With no subscripts, I only have one calcium atom. Nitrogen is 14. And when I when I Distribute the two. Now I have two of them. Yep. So that's 28. Oxygen is 16. When I distribute the two, I have six of them. Yeah. Not five of them. Very common mistake. Yep. So I have six of them. That's got to be 96. I have to add all these up. I got 164 grams per mole. Box around that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Box around That's that. how we know you got your final answer. There that. you go. So, um, I think that kind of brings us to the end of this video, right, Mr. Mills? It really does. So, we just calculated four examples. Right. It's going to be the same thing over and over and over again. In the next video, in the next lecture, we're going to take the idea of one mole weighing a certain mass, and we're going to say, okay, well, what how, how about a half a mole? Or, or three moles. Or three moles, or ten moles. Right. How much would that weigh in this in, in the lab? Because exactly. we're taking it a step farther. We're going to balancing equations, which use mole coefficients as their you know bread and butter. So you, go. you got to know how to count atoms. Check. There you go. And you need to know how to apply the masses for each of those atoms. From get the, the gram formula mass. Here, Here you go. go. Sorry, we had like eighteen examples in our pack. Yeah, something like we that. We only did three or four in class, and a gram formula mass Kogel. And a game even. So yep. critical skill, hinge pin, got to have it, got to know it, got to remember it now, tomorrow, next week, next sure. month. And one, another one of those skills where you need to do each step right, you need to get this right every time. Right, because if you don't, and you're weighing out chemicals in the lab, you're going to weigh out the wrong amount. And that means your reaction is going to go too far or maybe not far enough, meaning you won't get what you want out of it, which is the whole point of moles and Thanks for watching. See you guys.